President Harry Dumay, Board Chair Cynthia Lyons, Board Vice Chair Kate Kane, members of the Board of Trustees, Sister Joan Reisowitz, President and all Sisters of St. Joseph, members of the Center Advisory Board, faculty, staff, and students, friends of the college, and all distinguished guests joining us today. It is my distinct honor and pleasure to welcome you here for the virtual celebration marking the launch of the Center for Ethics, Religion, and Culture at Elms College. I am Walter Brough, Vice President of Academic Affairs, and I will be the Master of Ceremonies. Today, we will recognize and thank those individuals who, through their generous gifts, were essential to the Elms launching the Center and through the Center, developing programs that foster engagement and dialogue with all traditions without distinction on the most pressing and complex questions of ethics, faith, reason, and culture today. Through academic and scholarly engagement, the Center will explore how fundamental moral, ethical, and cultural issues challenge and shape our reasoning, faith traditions, and socio-cultural norms. Through ethical leadership development that fosters service and community outreach, the Center will elevate and promote ethical, religious, and cultural discourse in the greater community. To start the program, I invite Suzanne Fogarty, class of 2021, and a nursing major and religious studies minor to come to the podium to give the invocation. Suzanne. Let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God. God of many names, gathered into one, we acknowledge your presence here in this day as we come together in thanksgiving to celebrate the fulfillment of an idea, a common hope, a dream. We thank you for being present with all those who traveled this long journey to bring to fruition the Center for Ethics, Religion, and Culture. We thank you for the ministry of leadership that is represented here. We bless you for the generosity and support of our benefactors and committee members who worked to make this center a reality. We ask your continued blessing on this venture that all who engage with the Center for Ethics, Religion, and Culture may fully enter into the experience of sharing the richness of the Catholic intellectual tradition, promote interfaith dialogue, and commit to diversity and inclusion in the curricular and co-curricular programs of the college. Let your spirit continue to flow through the work of our hearts and hands to sustain and strengthen us for the future tasks we will undertake to ensure a vibrant center that is reflective of our core values of faith, community, justice, and excellence, and whose efforts will reach far beyond our community. We pray all this in Jesus' name and through the intercession of Mary, Our Lady of the Elms. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Suzanne. To give welcome and remarks, I invite to the podium Dr. Harry DeMay, President of Elms College. Harry E. DeMay, PhD, MBA, is the 11th President of the College of Our Lady of the Elms. He has served at senior and executive levels in higher education finance and administration for 20 years, including at St. Anselm College, Harvard University's Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, Boston College's Graduate School of Social Work, and Boston University's School of Engineering. In addition, Dr. DeMay served for nine years as a Boston College adjunct faculty member. Dr. DeMay currently serves as a commissioner, treasurer, member of the executive committee, and member of the annual report on finance and enrollment committee for the New England Commission of Higher Education. He also serves on the boards of the Association of Independent Colleges and Universities in Massachusetts, 
the Student Aid Policy Committee for the National Association of Independent Colleges and Universities, the Boston Foundation's Haiti Development Institute, Pope Francis Preparatory School in Springfield, Mass., and the Board of Trustees of Norwich University in Northfield, Vermont. Dr. DeMay. Thank you very much, Walter. And thank you, Suzanne, for this very nice invocation. Welcome everyone to the official launch of the Center for Ethics, Religion, and Culture. I am so grateful for the many people involved in making this moment possible. You will hear from a few of them today, and I am sure that you will join me in being both humbled and inspired by the support for this new center at Elms College. <clears throat> About two years ago, I asked the following question to Dr. Walter Bro: How do we integrate and make visible for the wider community the many aspects of our mission related to the fact that we are a Catholic institution founded by the Sisters of St. Joseph. Those aspects, which include our desire for students to have a strong foundations, foundation in ethics, our educational work in support of the Diocese of Springfield, our approach to offering students spiritual as well as educational growth, among other things. In setting out to answer this question, Dr. Bro convened a Committee on Mission and Ethics Integration, which he asked Dr. Peter de Pergola to chair. As the committee began to develop some cogent and inspiring recommendations, we invited a 15-member advisory board to test whether they were as excited about the committee's ideas as we were. Indeed, they were. And based on their endorsement and the Board of Trustees' enthusiastic approval, we endeavored to obtain the support to bring these ideas to fruition. As it is often said, no money, no mission. This launch today would not have been possible without the generous support of three foundational donors. Each of them brings a passion for a particular aspect of the work of the center and put together their material and intellectual support continue to inspire us. You can recognize Dr. Carolyn Jacobs' commitment to st student spiritual growth and to interfaith exchanges in the final plan for the Center for Ethics, Religion, and Culture. Similarly, Jack and Colette Dill had already seeded the Reverend Hugh Crean endowed lecture series which will now be coordinated by the center. In addition, their influence can be found in the center's commitment to a liberal arts education, which is infused with ethics. The anonymous donor wants Elms College's commitment to the Catholic intellectual tradition to be celebrated and visible to the world. Their combined altruism underscores their passion to shape the lives of countless students for generations to come. As president of this wonderful college, I am very excited and profoundly grateful for their support for this important educational initiative. For decades, 
Elms College has served as a place where thoughtful discourse on ethics, spirituality, and culture has always been welcome among students, faculty, and the greater Western Massachusetts community. The Center for Ethics, Religion, and Culture will amplify that effort among questions to be contemplated by the center is one that was posed by Edward Mahoney, associate editor for the Journal of Catholic Higher Education in its latest issue. Quote, how does an institution remain genuinely Catholic and generously inclusive and open to pluralism? End quote. How do we do that? We will do so partly by putting our contemporary culture and society under the prism of ethics and the Catholic intellectual tradition. In so doing, the center will help students make meaning of society's turbulences, its imperfections, as well as its promise. As George Dennis O'Brien, President Emeritus of the University of Rochester reminds us, quote, the distinction between art and life between order and chaos is critical. One must look at life in its own terms in order to understand the Christian gospel, end quote. We will also do so through the power of dialogue and cooperation among faith traditions. As Pope Francis stated, it is neither a culture of confrontation nor a culture of conflict which builds harmony within and beyond, between peoples, but rather a culture of encounter and a culture of dialogue. This is the only way to peace, end quote. And so under the leadership of Dr. De Pergola, the Center for Ethics, Religion, and Culture will create interdisciplinary academic programs at the intersections of ethics, business, healthcare, and biomedical sciences. It will advance scholarship and add new knowledge to our understanding of these truths. It will coordinate with campus ministry and invite students to explore their spirituality. It will collaborate with the, institution, the Institute of Theology and Pastoral Studies to serve the Diocese of Springfield and promote interfaith exchanges. It will do all that thanks to our don donors' enthusiastic support and inspiration, our trustees and advisory board's ongoing guidance, and our faculty and staff's continued hard work. With steady focus, an increased multidisciplinary collaboration, the Center for Ethics, Religion, and Culture can become a leader in the scholarly engagement of ethics, religion, and culture. Thank you all so very much for being a part of this effort and for making this happen here at Elms College. Thank you, Dr. DeMay. To give remarks, I invite to the podium, Dr. Peter DePergola, the Shaughness Family Chair in Humanities, Associate Professor of Bioethics and Medical Humanities, Associate Professor of Philosophy and Religious Studies, and the founding Executive Director of the Center for Ethics, Religion, and Culture. Dr. DePergola.
Thank you, Walter. Um, thank you, Dr. Dumay. Good evening, members of the Elms College community. I'm Dr. Peter DePergola, and it's an honor to be here with you tonight. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for joining us for this historic moment in the rich and storied legacy of the College of Our Lady of the Elms. What we are celebrating tonight was once just a simple dream in my mind. After years of hard work and collaboration to see that dream become a reality, it is my distinct honor to serve as the founding executive director of the Center for Ethics, Religion, and Culture. I am convinced that, in time, the center will change the intellectual landscape of Western Massachusetts as we know it. I want to begin by thanking the individuals who helped this dream become a reality. First, to our exceptionally generous benefactors, especially Dr. Caroline Jacobs, the Dill family, and our anonymous naming donor. Thank you for your breathtaking generosity of spirit. I assure you that we will use this funding prudently and we will make you proud. To the Elms College administration, especially Drs. Harry Dumay and Walter Bro, thank you for believing in the possibility of this idea to become a reality with legs. Your yes yesterday has made today possible. To my colleagues and friends on campus, especially those on the center's advisory board and leadership team, thank you for being the rudders that steered this ever-expanding ship. To the Sisters of St. Joseph of Springfield, thank you for helping me realize my true calling as an academic and as the leader of this center, to provide a high-quality education to those least likely to have access to it. Your mission is my anchor, both on and off campus. Finally, to my beautiful wife and daughter, thank you for being my inspiration and the loves of my life. You remind me daily that the only greatness that matters in this life is measured in terms of goodness. For the past 11 years, I've enjoyed the immense privilege of teaching and much more often learning from the intellectually distinguished and culturally diverse student body at Elms College. This opportunity has been and continues to be the great honor of my life, second only to being a husband and a father. The spirit of my work as both a clinical and academic bioethicist aims to embody the Hippocratic maxim that it matters much more what sort of person has a problem than it does what sort of problem a person has. Framed educationally, this means that my students' moral character formation matters much more to me than it does where that well-formed moral character is brought to bear in the workplace. Put simply, my students know that having a good career is important, but how one has a good career and who one becomes in the process of pursuing it is more important still. Over the past several years, but especially during this global pandemic, I've come to realize that the big questions of higher education have very little to do with academics and almost everything to do with the moral domains of human existence that don't show up on student transcripts and can't be remedied by lesson plans. Those domains concern the lifelong search amid debilitating injustice and the effort to remedy it for meaning, purpose, identity, and value. The Center for Ethics, Religion, and Culture aims to respond directly to that search. It begins with the supposition that any systematic and rational analysis of contemporary issues must be rooted in substantive traditions of thought and practice. Recognizing that ethical inquiry is both a byproduct of religious and cultural awareness, the center explores the contributions of philosophy, science, medicine, law, 
media, literature, politics, and the arts in contemporary society. In the spirit of the Sisters of St. Joseph, the center welcomes engagement and dialogue with all traditions without distinction as individuals grapple with the most pressing and complex questions of ethics, religion, and culture today. In doing so, the center aims to advance research, scholarship, and education in ethics, to examine religious and spiritual values in their compatibility with scientific and philosophical reasoning, and to foster lives of cultural awareness, appreciation, and meaning. In light of those seemingly Herculean tasks, there is a classic evasion that we would do well to address. The name of the evasion is skepticism. And the idea goes something like this. If the greatest minds in the history of the world have failed to resolve the ethical, religious, or cultural problems that we intend to grapple with here at the center, who are we to think that at Elms College we can make any meaningful progress? So perhaps it's just a matter of each person having his or her own principles, and there's nothing more to be said about it. No unified way of reasoning. That is the evasion of skepticism, to which I'd offer the following reply. It's true. The questions about ethics, religion, and culture that we will contend with at the center have been debated for a very long time. But the very fact that they have recurred and persisted may suggest that though they are impossible in one sense, they are unavoidable in another. And the reason they're unavoidable, the reason they're inescapable, is that you and I live some answer to those questions every day. So skepticism, just throwing up your hands and giving up on ethical, religious, or cultural reflection, is no solution. My promise to you, is that the work of the Center for Ethics, Religion, and Culture will awaken in you the restlessness of reason and to accompany you wherever it might lead. Thank you, and I look forward to working together. Thank you, Peter. Next, to give the perspective of the Center Advisory Board, I invite Reverend Andrea Vassini, the Michael P. Walsh Professor of Bioethics and Professor of Moral Theology at Boston College to give remarks. Reverend Vassini. Thank you for the invitation to support this uh, very distinguished initiative that is uh, the Center for Ethics, Religion and Culture of the College of Our Lady of the Elms. I very much appreciate uh, what uh, the college is trying to do with the CERC. I had uh, the pleasure of being invited in 2016, three years ago in October, for a Mary Dooley lecture organized by the Religious Studies Department at the Institute for Theology and Pastoral Studies. The Dr. Per Peter Pergola in particular had invited me in light of uh, no, previous uh, exposure to Boston College where he earned one of his degrees. And uh, the lecture was on um, environmental uh, issues from the point of view of bioethics, bioethical care of our planet was the title. and. Uh, it was a wonderful opportunity of being part of uh, an interesting phase of the college with the first ideas about uh, uh, what will become the center. And uh, I was uh, very much impressed by the colleagues I met, by the students, uh, and by also the way in which uh, uh, the region uh, was uh, participating at the lecture in a very you know, engaged way. So in a way, it was a first uh, glimpse 
uh, we could say, of what the CERC now aims to realize in a more structured and stable and uh, determined way. To work in the field of bioethics and who are interested in ethical issues regarding society, it is important to find the ways in which with others you can address the ethical issues that people face and also reflect on choices that are made in society and what we would want for the future of our society. And so I greatly appreciate the fact that the Center for Ethics, Religion and Culture aims at training leaders in a moment in which we noticed the importance of leadership or the lack of leadership in civil society. Secondly, I think it is very relevant that the center wants to have profound roots in the, the Christian and in particular Catholic tradition. Whether we think about spirituality or social issues or uh, passion for the common good within our world. There is also a very important style, a very important method for uh, our society that is interdisciplinary, where we appreciate the diversity of contributions that we can gather to address ethical issues in society and to promote intellectual uh, development. Moreover, I want to highlight that there is a strong commitment to gather also religious uh, resources, in particular interreligious interfaith uh, communities, creating opportunities for dialogue and collaboration in uh, uh, the region, and a strong emphasis on the importance of uh, acknowledging diversity and promoting inclusion. So both in terms of the goal the mission and the method, I think it is really praiseworthy what the center is uh, proposing to realize. And uh, the ultimate goal will be promoted by the center and it will be the common good and the social justice. So it seems to me that the center will be a privileged space and the privileged way in which the college can continue to foster his own mission of promoting social justice and the common good in today's pluralist and globalized society. I think it is always important to point toward something that we want to realize, but with roots in something that uh, makes us uh, who we are. And so in this case, the Catholic tradition has this uh, dual dimension. On the one hand, it points toward where we want to go. So a future with the greater solidarity, with greater justice, with a, a commitment to promote the common good for everyone, everywhere. And at the same time, we rely on what we already experienced. What we discover was uh, truthful, what was helpful, also what we realized needed to be purified and modified and changed whether we think about the intellectual Catholic tradition or spirituality or the social thought and uh, the practices in society or this openness to dialogue and willingness to dialogue with others, respecting their diversity and uh, aiming at a constructive interaction. So I think these are really essential elements when we think at higher education in the Christian and Catholic context, we think about uh, ways in which we are preparing the leaders of the future, uh, the change makers, those who will help us to really make our world a better place. So I'm very impressed by the high quality of the proposal and uh, the overall uh, engagement of the center. So I see it as a very promising uh, way of uh, thinking about the future and planning in constructive ways for a better future. Thank you, Reverend Vecini. For a Board of Trustee and Donor perspective, 
I now invite to give remarks Dr. Carolyn Jacobs, Dean Emerita of the Smith College School of Social Work, and Elizabeth Marting Truhalt, Professor Emerita of Social Work, Smith College, a member of the Elms College Board of Trustees, and a founding donor of the Center for Ethics, Religion, and Culture. Dr. Jacobs. On behalf of the Elms Board of Trustees, and as a founding donor to the Center for Ethics, Religion, and Culture, congratulations to Dr. Dume, Dr. De Pergola, the administration, staff, and the planning committee for the center. I am delighted to share my thoughts for the launch of the center. The question was posed to me as to what compelled me to contribute to the center. For years, I have been committed to the mission of Elms as a Catholic liberal arts college with professional undergraduate and graduate programs. I am especially committed to the spiritual life of the Elms community as supported by liturgical worship on campus, interfaith cooperation, and campus ministry service programs. My answer is that the vision of the center expanded my view of what Elms could be capable of if my commitment was open to a vision that moved to a full integration of Catholic social teaching into focused thinking about ethical education in today's world. How this idea supports the commitment to the dear neighbor as expressed by the Sisters of St. Joseph can be seen by our need to pay intellectual and spiritual attention to the two pandemic crises of COVID-19 and social injustice. These two crises raise important ethical questions regarding long-term issues of health disparities and systemic racism. The critical ethical issues embedded in these crises lead to important questions among many needing to be addressed by the center. I believe that the related teaching, scholarship, and spiritual development is significant in Elm's contribution to our community and our world. In the tradition of the Sisters of St. Joseph, the college's liberal arts core challenges students to remain rooted in faith, educated in mind, compassionate in heart, and responsive to civic and social obligations. The center speaks to Elm's core values and will explore intellectual, spiritual, and community programming to operationally develop programs, curriculum, and scholarship that will have outcome measures to assess the impact of the center for our community. The center has great potential to lead the college in creating spaces for intellectual dialogues for the community that explore the critical ethical issues of the day, the opportunity for a local, regional, national, and international presence for Elms is exciting. From my perspective, the center meets the mission of the college and serves the legacy of the Sisters of St. Joseph. It is designed to support the provision of an excellent Catholic education for a diversity of students who will be challenged to think about and engage their impact on the world. I anticipate the center bringing intellectual rigor to the exploration of ethics across the curriculum, to cultural awareness, appreciation, and meaning, and to the examination of the many ways that religious and spiritual values enhance moral grounding for students and faculty's understanding of serving our neighbors.
Thank you, Carolyn. For a donor perspective, I now invite John, Jack, and Colette Dill to the podium to give remarks. Mr. Dill is the president and CEO of Colebrook Realty Services Incorporated. He has served in leadership roles with Bay State Health, Bay State Medical, Massachusetts Housing Investment Corporation, Springfield School Volunteers, New England Public Media, Massachusetts Business Alliance for Education, the Funders Collaborative for Early Literacy, Springfield Business Leaders for Education, to name just a few. He is currently Vice Chairman of Fallon Hills. Colette is a former marketing officer of a community bank and has taken leadership on numerous boards, including Girl Scouts of Western Massachusetts, New England Public Radio, and Ronald McDonald House Charities. She is a former member of the Parish Council of Holy Name Parish in Springfield and current member of the Finance Committee and a former board member of the Wesson Women's Center. Mr. and Mrs. Dill are representing the founding donation from B. John and Colette Dill and family for the Center for Ethics, Religion, and Culture. Mr. and Mrs. Dill. Thank you, Walter. Suzanne, thank you for your introductory uh, invocation. Susan, as you may know, is on her way to a career in health services, and we congratulate you for that. Uh, it is humbling to be among so many PhDs, particularly for someone who barely escaped with an undergraduate degree, uh, but I will do my best. Um, so Claude and I are here, uh, not on the thought that we occupy uh, some higher moral or ethical ground, but rather out of profound, uh, profound a sense of gratitude to those many in our lives who in fact have. So we think today of people like uh, our former pastor, cousin and close friend, the Reverend Hugh Crean, and so many sisters of St. Joseph, like Sister Catherine Leary, as well as the Sisters of Providence, and in, in my education, uh, the patient, sometimes Jesuits, who tolerated sometimes my high school self uh, as they tried to exhort us to be men for others. There are so many others, such as our parents uh, and those in our family, who both set guardrails and signposts that are all too, miss too often missing in the young lives around us. And I particularly want to thank uh, Bishop Rosansky, who was helpful in encouraging us and, and assisted us in, in making this gesture today. So we find it, uh, it's both appropriate and hopeful that the board and leadership of the Elms has taken up the challenge to invigorate the conversation about ethics in our institutions, activities, and daily lives. If there ever was a time that thought and discussion to raise the application of ethical norms and considerations in our world was appropriate, it is now. Certainly the pandemic and its disproportionate attack on the poorest and most disenfranchised among us as well as the question of how the allocation of resources when treatments and vaccines are proven valuable is, an, is of immediate concern uh, that the entire society needs to engage in effectively. And the apparent metric that all ambition, merit, and value of the individual in our society is based on wealth needs critical review. It seems unquestioned that in our day, but this, this attitude has cost us dearly as we undervalue uh, so many working who are selflessly working to make lives better all around us on a daily basis, nurses, first responders, teachers, and others. And technology has clearly outpaced the human guidance needed to deliver on its true promise for all. Our hope is that this next generation has the analytical power, the energy, integrity, thought and commitment to service to bail us out of the morass we are leaving them. Therefore, it is out of a self-interest that we also are pleased to play a small part uh, in this effort uh, undertaken by our Lady of the Elms and pray for its success. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Mr. and Mrs. Dill. To give final remarks, I invite back to the podium, Dr. Harry DeMay. Thank you, Dr. Bro. And so our work begins. Once again, I'm beyond delighted that we've gotten to this moment of promise and opportunity, even though this is just the beginning rather than the celebration of an accomplishment. I want to thank everyone who has already contributed to nurture this initiative from an idea to a concept to a proposal to this center that we are launching today. Thank you all for being a part of this and thank you for your continued support and belief as we move forward and Peter, get to work. Thank you again, Dr. DeMay. And thank you all for being here today in person or virtually and helping us celebrate such a significant event. I would like to take a moment to thank everyone that had a part in preparing for today's celebration. Academic affairs staff, institutional advancement staff, marketing, campus ministry, media services, and the facilities crew. And certainly thank you again to all of our speakers and in particular the founding donors who because of their generosity and vision are allowing Elms College to continue to serve our Catholic mission the charism of the founding sisters of St. Joseph, our students in the greater community through the ministry and academic programs that will be the Center for Ethics, Religion, and Culture. Have a wonderful rest of day. Thank you. <laughs>